There are very, very few people in the world who are brave and smart and passionate and deeply caring about making the world a better place. And Irshad Manji is one such person. I wanted to start tonight's discussion before we get into this book for you to give us your explanation of what you are trying to do in the world. What is it that you are so passionately engaged in with all this intelligence? I have, as a Muslim who has studied Islam on my own, after being kicked out of the religious school that I was attending, the madrasa, uh, in Canada, and I was kicked out, by the way, for asking too many inconvenient questions, I decided, the right reason to be kicked out, I decided that um, I needed to understand Islam on my own, uh, free of the prejudices of uh, my so-called teacher. She said, um, I'm facing a bit of a problem. I've fallen in love with a Jewish man. She said, uh, I don't believe that he needs to convert to Islam uh, what, you know, for us to be married. And then she went on to say, here's the problem. I am literally putting my life on the line to try and achieve political change in my country. But the far more frightening thing is for me to speak with my own parents about the love I have for this man. This question that she asked me, what can I do to get my parents to understand, was the beginning of a journey I took. What do you think at this moment in time we have as much religious extremism as we do. One key factor would indeed be globalization, the uh, relatively free movement of capital, um, of, of people, um, and of technology. And what that's doing is blurring the lines of identity for you know, innumerable people around the world. And so when you can no longer say, this is exactly who I am, and this is exactly what I believe, ego gets attached to particular labels. Faith is not dogma. Faith is secure enough to handle questions. Faith never needs to be threatened by questions. Dogma, on the other hand, of any kind, nationalist, multiculturalist, uh, feminist, capitalist, dogma of any kind is insecure, rigid, and brittle and therefore deserves, in my view, to be threatened by questions. When we give rights to cultures or religions, because we think we're being really progressive in doing so, what we're winding up doing is further empowering the already powerful in a cultural community or a religious community, because they're the ones who already have the authority, so-called, to define what is to be respected as custom. Exactly. So instead of giving rights or assuming that these groups ought to have rights, we ought to be asking one simple question that our Norwegian anthropologist taught me. Ask yourself and then ask the person who is telling you to respect a particular custom, ask them, what does my respect for this custom do to the most vulnerable in your community? That's the question. That How's that for question. a simple question? Thank you for